Good morning, BOHS. Today is January 12, 2022. In case you missed ordering from the BUHS Booster Club Holiday Online Store, you have another chance. All orders are due January 14th. Go to the BUHS Booster Club Facebook page or store link, or contact Carrie, my mother, at 802-558-5537. All <laughs> proceeds benefit the student-athletes. Um, on January 22nd and 23rd, the Wild Goose Players will present a theater event, a food and shelter. The show is at 7.30 p.m. and is located at the Next Stage Arts in Putney. Tickets are $35 ahead of time and 40 at the door. Now we're to Weather with Forest. Hey guys, so uh, today is supposed to be a high of 35 and a low of 18. Um, Thursday is going to be a high of 39, low of 26. And Friday is going to be real cold with a high of 32, low of negative 4, and it's going to be cloudy all week. And back to the desk. Thanks, Horace. <laughs> Final exams for BUHS are on January 20th and 21st. The schedule has been posted on the BUHS website. On Saturday, January 29th, the Northern Roots Festival will be happening from 12 to 5.30 p.m. The event will be taking place at the Brattleboro Music Center in 72 Blanche Moyes Way, Brattleboro, Vermont. Every Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m., the Guilford Community Church will be hosting a centering prayer. Open meditation is from 4.15 to 5 p.m. in the sanctuary, and from 5 p.m. to 5.20 p.m., a book discussion will be in the Houghton Room. Lastly, from 5.20 to 5.30 p.m., there will be a closing meditation. Now over to Aaron with his special. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so today's word is stir-crazy. Uh, stir-crazy means distraught because of prolonged confinement. Um, it's a great word because of all the COVID cases. So that's all I got for today. Back to the desk. Thank you so much, Aaron. <laughs> Next Monday won't be a school day because it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Make sure not to come. The day is to honor the activist for his accomplishments and contributions to the civil rights movement. The Harris Hill Ski Jump is now open. Come on Saturday to see the Big Pepsi Challenge in U.S. Cup. Gates open at 10 a.m. The ski jump is on Cedar Street, if you do not know. On January 24th, there will be no school due to Teacher and Service Day. On the 25th, the new semester starts. That's all for today, BUHS. Today we're closing with an interview with Gordy. Hi, it's Dalen, and today I'm here with... Gordy Baldwin, and I'm a safety officer, and I've been here for... This is my 11th year. Okay, 11th year. So, um, what's your job? I, oh, well, you already said that. I'm, well, no, my job is a safety officer, but... but it's basically to keep staff and students safe and, 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 and in class, mm -hmm. mostly. What do you enjoy most about your job? I enjoy working with the students the most. And really? <laughs> no, I do. I do. That's cool. The staff is cranky every once in a while. Yeah. But, but, you know, I don't have to go home with them. I don't have to go home with you. So, you know, yeah. it's pretty cool. I see you during the day, and I get lots of excitement, and then I get to go home. <laughs> yeah, you're very popular. You get to go home without them. Without them, yes. <laughs> so what do you enjoy the least about your job? Well, uh, paperwork, any kind of paperwork. And um, this year it's been especially hard uh, communicating because... COVID just makes it really, really hard to communicate between departments with yeah. teachers, and um, and I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. So. Yep. Um, what inspired or led you to take the job? 
Well, it's funny because I worked in, I had a, pri a private company in New York, then I bought an inn in Vermont, then I went to WKVT where I became the news manager, yeah. uh, news director, and then I started subbing about 12 years ago. Really? Yeah, and I, I the radio was kind of like, uh, I wasn't going to want to stay with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when there was a... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wait, uh, our, our, our prop just moved. <laughs> All right, we're good. Okay. Um, so when there was a, a, an opening in the safety house, I went and asked if I could interview, and I did. And this was in June, and, you know, about August 20th, they called me up and said, do you want the job? I said, yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't expecting the call at that point. I said, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll try something else. It was destined. It was destiny, yeah. Oh, no. We're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. So, um, do you ever want to... Wait. Do you ever want to quit because of the kids? No. Never? No, I want to quit sometimes. Yeah. But just because it's very stressful. It's been stressful since we came out of, uh, of isolation. Yeah, but definitely. I, I want to quit in the sense that I want to go home right now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's important to build strong relationships with the students in our community? I think it's essential. Yeah. I think if you don't build a relationship, why, why, why bother? Yeah, me and Gordy are really good friends. <laughs> We're brothers. Yeah. I'm another mother. So, um, what would you be doing right now if you weren't a security officer at the school? I'd be on a beach in Florida. No, I wouldn't be on a beach in Florida. I'd probably be on a beach in South Carolina. Yeah living in savannah in some funky part of savannah and uh going out to eat every night my wife is southern she would love it yeah hmm uh do you like being a security officer more than being a radio announcer yeah i like them both mm -hmm. but but this this is more fulfilling cool i get to make connections with uh, with good humans i i my sitting across the table from us right now is my good friend Ken Fortin, and uh, we've had a lot of fun working together. Um, what's your favorite memory of UHS? I think probably the first day that I had the job here, it was uh, right after Hurricane Irene. Mm -hmm. And I was still working for the radio station, and I was working, I, first day here, and a helicopter lands, and it's the governor of Vermont, and Senator Leahy, and I said to my boss then, Jesse, I said, I gotta get an interview from them. Do you <laughs> mind if I go out and just ask them some questions? And he said, no. But I was still working for the radio station. <laughs> That's sick. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I just, I, it's kind of stressful right now because mm -hmm. we're, we're in a, um, a almost a, 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 dire a, a zero degree angle climb yeah. in COVID and, uh, you know, I'm not worried about getting it, but uh, th there are people who it, it does harm, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that, that I'm not one giving them a, a, the disease. Yeah. And I really don't want to get it, but if I get it, this one seems like the one I want to get. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your time. Hey, thank you. Yep. Hey. My brother. Good job. Boy, I guess we're back here. All right. A member of a golfing party in Australia's Christmas Island captured a video of a massive coconut crab attempting to steal a golf club. Paul Bunner said he was out Friday golfing with his friends. When Bunner captured a video of a large coconut crab, a giant crustacean that can grow up to one meter wide and weigh over ten pounds. <laughs> Aptly named a robber crab due to the species, um, they, they tend to steal stuff, but one of, the, one of his friends uh, had a bag and the coconut crab climbed into it to hold of a club and the guys tried to wrestle the club away from him and the crab ended up snapping the club in half <laughs> and uh, the, <laughs> yeah the crab crawled away with the other half of the club uh, with the other half of the club and most likely the crab was attracted to the bag because the old food that was in the bag how big are these coconut crabs i'm not gonna mess with that crab holy sh <laughs> there are there are <laughs> there are crabs that big yeah he would beat me in a fight actually yeah like no cap they're, yeah, they're the <laughs> largest inverted cap. <laughs> and they, they can crush coconuts with their claws. Yeah, other Could things. they scratch, like, yep. do your head? Yep. 
Just don't think about it too I'm much. I'm not messing with that. That's I, terrifying. I Wait, where do you find them? Uh, mainly on Australia's Christmas Island. That's oh, basically where they are. Oh, of course. It's from Down Under. <laughs> down Under. <laughs> it's kind of scary down there, man. As long as they're not around here. Yeah, yeah as long as they're not around here. But yeah, that but you know, there's there's a picture of one on like a giant a trash can, and it it could, it covers most of the trash can. I will be having nightmares about this. Freaking yeah, you know, crap. just don't worry about it. Okay. I'm going to see a picture of this. I after. thought crabs yeah, were yeah, like yeah, I got a full picture big, of this, this big. They are. Uh, they're also descended from hermit crabs. You know. Wait, so it's like ones. the size of this table? No, it's not the size <laughs> of this table. <laughs> what is the size of a trash can? Not the size of this table. <laughs> It, it can be one meter long from, like, the tip of it, the one claw to, like, the base of the other claw, so, like, this big. That's, That's crazy. terrifying. It, it's huge, yeah. All right, back to the desk or wherever we're going from here. Bye. Have Bye. a great day. Have a wonderful evening. Be smart. Make Goodbye. good decisions.